Hello and welcome back. My name is Ned. I am a technical evangelist at Caspio and in this last video of this ultimate video guide I'm going to teach you how to create a custom form that contains some inline HTML and CSS to make it more visually appealing. Let's take a look. So here's the form that we're going to learn how to create. It is a wire transfer authorization form. So if you are coming from a financial industry and are wondering if uh, you can utilize Caspio to build such a form, the answer is yes. In this video, we're not going to spend the entire time learning how to customize the form, but I will get you started. I will show you how to create the logo, how to center the logo, how to add some divs that will serve as containers for our HTML elements, also the title, subtitles, some subheadings, and how to align the fields together in multiple columns. So let's go to Caspio and let's learn how to create this form. Again, if you've seen all the other videos in this ultimate video guide, by now you should know how to begin building an application in Caspio, or if you've seen some of our other videos that are on our YouTube channel, it's very easy to begin. You click on the link for new app. You can either import data, or you can begin building your application from scratch. I'm going to build this application from scratch. I'll give it a name. Something very simple. I'll just call it custom form and click finish. As soon as you hit finish, you should be able to see that application listed on your home screen. From here, what you want to do is click on Open. And as soon as you open the application, you'll see these objects on the left-hand side. The most important place where you want to begin building your applications is always going to be the Tables object. Tables are the foundation or the backbone of any app that you develop in Caspio, so you always have to begin here first. And to build a table, it's very simple. You click on New Link at the top. And then you need to list all the fields that you wish to have inside this table. These fields are going to be storing information from your end users once they submit the form. So for example, if you want to collect first name from your end user, you will type out the field name for first name. Or you can have your own naming convention depending on what you like. I'm not going to go through the process of creating each of the fields. I'm quickly going to add these fields, but I will point out the important data types that the table should have. Okay, I have quickly added all of my fields to this table. Let me explain what's happening inside this table. We have transfer ID as the very first field because every single table needs to have a unique field. And as you can see my data type, I selected random ID. So every time a transfer is made or that form is submitted, we're automatically assigning that transfer a unique ID to identify it inside the table. Date to be sent, usually when you're dealing with date fields, you want to select date and time. So that's why my data type is a date and time. Transfer amount, we're dealing with numerical data, so that's why I opted out to select currency. A lot of the fields are going to have text 255 because we're just storing textual data. I have four checkboxes. As you can see, cell phone, home phone, work phone, and email are all set as a yes or no. It's a Boolean checkbox. And at the bottom, we have four additional fields. Two of them are text 255 so that we can type out the name, and we have two date fields. Now, notice on the right where it says label in this column here, I have typed out the entire label name because when you add a field inside your table, you're limited to how many characters you can type. So it's really just supposed to be for reference only. But when you're ready to input your entire label, you can write it out on the right side. But you can also modify the label once you begin building the form under data pages, which you'll see in just a couple of minutes. Once you're done adding all of your fields to your table, all you need to do is click Save. And I'm just going to call this Wire Transfers and click finish. And here's my very first table. Same way as before, if you would like to modify your fields once again, you can click on the design link. If you'd like to see your data inside a table, you can click on open. Now let's go to data pages and construct the form. To begin, click on the new data page link. This is going to launch Caspio's point and click wizard. And since we're building a submission form, let's go ahead and select that and hit next. For your data source, you want to select your table that you just created called Wire Transfers. Let's give this data page a name. So I'm just going to call this very simple Wire Transfer Form. As for my style, I have a custom Wire Transfer style that I created for this video. So I'm going to select that and continue. On this screen, it's asking me what fields do I want to include on the submission form. In this case, we want to include all the fields. Continue. And again, if you've seen the other videos, once you reach this screen to configure properties, you're going to be able to select your fields on the left-hand side, and you can make modifications on the right side. 
at any time you can click on the preview button to see what the form looks like and as you can see it's a very basic form everything is a single column we haven't made any changes to it yet so let's go ahead and do that but for now I'm going to close the preview tab and before I make any modifications to my form what I'll do is I'll click finish to save my changes and I'm very quickly going to deploy this form to my website by clicking on deploy enabling access and copying this code that Caspio provides I'm going to open up my HTML document find my placeholder where I want that form to be embedded paste my Caspio code save my page and once you refresh your website you should be able to see that form seamlessly embed. So the whole goal of this video is to turn this form and have it look like this when we're done. So let's go back to Caspio, click edit once again, and let's continue all the way to the configuration screen. The first thing I'm going to do is insert what's called header and footer. And here you can add any text that you want and you can manipulate that text using the rich text editor to make font bigger, you can make it italic, bold, you can also add images. It's completely up to you. The first thing I'll do is paste my text. So this is the text that I would like to appear above my fields. And if you just do this and click finish again and refresh your form, here's what it looks like. Now if we compare the two forms side by side, this is what I want my text to eventually look like and here's what it looks like at this point. So let's go back to Caspio again, click edit, configuration screen, inside the header. There's one more thing that I want to show you. You can either highlight this text and then manipulate it by clicking on the drop down to change the heading size or if you know what you're doing in terms of HTML and CSS, you can click on the source button and here directly you can now add any HTML that you want to manipulate that text. One more thing that I want to add to my form is the logo. And that's actually very simple to do. I'm just going to paste another line of HTML to my header. Uh, what I've done with this is I'm using a URL where that logo is hosted at the moment. So this is the URL, the destination where the logo is hosted. A little bit of HTML syntax is needed. So if you want to display that image, you're going to have to use an image source tag followed by equal sign and then the quotes and then you paste your destination URL you close the quotes and then you set the width of how big you want that logo to be I've set the width to 300 pixels I want to display that inside a block and then you set the margin left to be auto and margin right to be auto as well which means that it's going to be an equal width from both sides and that's going to make that logo be centered so let's see if I click the source button again it should show me that logo now it should be displayed and if I finish and save my changes and refresh my form again, we should be able to see that logo appear at the very top. You can also resize the logo if you want. That's very easy to do. Just edit once again. Go to the configuration screen and inside the header, if you want to change the size of the logo, you can always do that by simply modifying the width. I can make it maybe 200 pixels. If I click on the source button again, you see how it's a much smaller logo now. Let's go back inside the source button and continue modifying the text. For my PO box, I would like to have this appear in its own container. So I'm going to create a very simple div. Think of divs like containers. They're going to be used to store any of the text inside that box. So I'm going to apply some styling to it. I want to align my text in the center and I'm going to add some padding around that text. So 15 pixels on the top, 0 pixels on the right, 20 pixels on the bottom, and 0 pixels to the left. Think of it like clockwise orientation, where you will be adding some spacing on the top of your text, no spacing to the right, 20 pixels underneath the text, and 0 pixels to the left. But the text will be centered inside that div, and all we need to do now is just close that div by closing the div tag like this. So you're going to open up the div here at the top and you're going to close that div on the bottom to wrap all of that information. I don't need this line break once I introduce the div because it's going to automatically push the next content underneath that div. So even if you click on the source button now you can see what we've done. We added this text inside a container, we applied some padding on top of the text, some padding underneath the text, and then we have this text centered underneath the logo. At any point you can always click finish 
refresh your website, and you should be able to see that text now centered in the middle of the form. So if we compare this side by side, you can see how we're slowly but surely getting all the text to align evenly with the original form. So let's go back to our example. And let's go back to Caspio and edit once again. Hit next a few times. Go back inside the header of the form. Click on the source button. And the next thing that I want to do is apply some styling to my main heading. So let's go ahead and do that. So all I'm going to do here is just use a very simple heading tag, H3. We're going to apply some styling to it. So I want the font weight to be 600 heavy, which means it's going to make it bold. But if you want it to be thinner, you can make it 500, 400, 300, and you can just move up and down depending on how, how thick you want that text to be. I also want to align this text in the center. And all you're going to do now is just remove this line break and close your H3 tag. So let's click on the source button and right away you can see how much bigger that text is and it's also bold. Let's click on the source button again and continue modifying the rest of the form. For the subheading, let's remove this H3 tag and let's go ahead and introduce a new div because I want this to be inside a container. So we'll say div style equals text align once again in the center. Font weight can also be 600. And all I'm going to do is just close that div by removing this line break because we don't need that. And just close the div to wrap all of that text. And the last one that I have here is uh, just a label above my field that says required. We're going to go ahead and use a H3 tag, style, equals, and then we're going to apply a margin, which works very similar to padding, where you create some space above and below and to the left and right of your text. And all I want is 25 pixels on top and zero pixels everywhere else. We're going to close that. And as you can see, I already have my H3 tag closed down below. So just to see what this looks like, I can click on the source button again, and here's the final result. If I save my changes now and go back to my form and refresh, you can see how it looks exactly like the form that we have on this tab. Now if I want to create this 2 by 2 effect where I have two columns with two rows, you can see in my live example, I have them all in a single column. Let's go back to Caspio, click Edit once again back to the configuration screen. And for this section here, what I would like to do is set this to two columns, and I want the label to appear on the top. But I only want that to be applied to my first four fields, which is this field, this one, this one, and this one. Underneath this field, I would like to have a new section added, like this. And I would also like to have a new heading. So if you look at the original form, this section has its own heading. And to do that, Go back to Caspio and very simply insert an HTML block and just add your text, whatever you want that text to say. Now it's very easy to actually duplicate this. You don't have to rewrite all of the HTML and CSS code. Go back to the very first one that we had and under source, just grab this H3 heading because it's going to be the same exact one. Copy it, go into your HTML block, click on the source button and just paste your text and rename it. And for the second one, we are calling it Bank Information. Back to Caspio and just go ahead and paste that text here. And that's all you have to do. Now for the following section, we also want this to appear in two columns with the labels on top. And you're also going to be introducing additional HTML blocks. We're not going to be doing that because it's very repetitive. Now that you've seen how it's done once, you should be able to replicate that yourself for each section that you have. I'm going to click finish to save my changes, refresh my form, and you get to see how we now have two columns. Here's my label on top, here's my second label underneath that, and we just have to continue going down the form to modify all the additional subheadings and also put all the fields side by side in two columns. Hopefully this gives you some idea on how you can customize the form inside Caspio. It's very easy. It just requires a little bit of HTML and CSS, but you also don't even have to do that if you actually use the rich text editor, which I'm going to show you in just a second here. Hit next. If you go to this HTML block and I click on the source button, 
Say for example, you don't know how to input H3, margin, etc. Let's go ahead and just copy this text, delete this, and if you were just to type out the text here, what you can do is just highlight that text, change it to heading 3, maybe put some spacing above it like this because we had 25 pixels, and now if you click finish and refresh your form, you get to see that same exact thing. I didn't have to use any HTML. So the reason why I showed you how to use HTML and CSS is for anybody who is technical, I want you to see that there is a capability here where you can input some additional coding in order to style things and make them look more visually appealing. But even if you don't have that technical knowledge, if you're not technically adept or savvy to do that, you can still use the rich text editor to accomplish the same thing. Same thing with the logo. Let's go back to Caspio. Let me show you that. Click Edit. Hit Next, Next, Next and inside the main header. Say for example you don't know how to input this image source tag with the destination URL etc. If you delete that and let's just say you go back out to the main page let's hit enter here a few times and if you want to put the logo right over here what you can do is click on this image button paste your destination URL where that image is hosted here's the URL to my image here you can set the width for that logo now. So let's just say 300, click OK, and there you have it. You didn't have to write the image source tag. All you need to do is click on this button here to accomplish the same exact thing. I hope you enjoyed the video on how to build a custom form in Caspio. This is really just the tip of the iceberg. There are so many more things you can accomplish if you are adept with HTML and CSS. Thanks for watching this entire Ultimate Video Guide if you did. I hope that you enjoyed it and hopefully we'll see you in the next Ultimate Video Guide. Have a great day. Take care. Bye-bye.